When you first launch Smoke, you receive the Autodesk Smoke 2015 splash screen, which gives you many controls and options as to how you're going to work in the application, including host computer, project settings, the workspace relative to the project, when doing collaboration work, and also your user. In this video, we're going to look at how to create projects, edit projects, and delete projects, either from here, the splash screen, or from within inside the application. By default, you will have no project created. In this case, I already have one project, but now I want to create a new project. So I'll click the new button and the create new project dialog box appears. I'm going to name this project discovering Europe. So I'll type that name in the actual name field. And then either by clicking down onto the dialog box or hitting the return key, I will set that name. Below that, we have our volume. During the installation of Smoke on your system, you chose where your main media storage volume would be. So by default, Smoke is going to choose that location for the volume, which is going to manage all the media Smoke creates the intermediate files while working in the application. You can have multiple volumes set up to be used inside of Smoke. And if you did set up multiple volumes, they would be available to you from the flyout. You could switch between them, and then this would determine what volume and media storage Smoke would use while working in this project. In my case here, I only have one, the original default, which is called Autodesk Media Storage. Moving down, we'll see our resolution area. Here's a flyout that I can click on and choose any one of the many default resolutions or even custom resolution if needed. I will choose 1920 by 1080 HD. Once I choose that as my resolution, you'll see that the width, the height, and the ratio are all set to the standard for any 1920 by 1080 project. Keep in mind that all the settings that we're adjusting here are just the default starting point when you create the project. You can mix any resolution of media, any frame rate of media, and work with them all inside of your project. Imagine this as a starting point for Smoke to create the project. You can control the color bit depth of the project. I'll set this to 10 bit. If needed, you can switch from progressive to a field-based project. Again, I'll leave it to the default progressive. Below that, you have your graphic bit depth you want to work in, and there's two options. There's 8-bit and 16-bit floating point graphics. I will recommend that 99% of the time you use 16-bit floating point for your graphics because you will get better rendered results with such things as transparencies, gradients, and the blending and compositing of different elements together. Choosing the 16-bit floating point graphic option will take longer to process, but in the end, the quality of your end result, your renders, will look better than choosing the 8-bit graphic option. Moving over to the right, you'll see our config template. When you choose a resolution, your config template is going to switch and match your resolution settings. So you can see that it reads 1920 by 1080 at 23.97 frames per second. The config template is relevant to your broadcast monitor and its default settings. This file, the config template, defines the display environment within Smoke and once again, in no way restricts you from mixing resolutions and different frame rates. Below that, we have the frame rate. And again, because the default for a resolution file of 1920 by 1080 is 23.97 frames per second, that is what is chosen. You can switch it by choosing any one of the options out of the flyout. Moving down below, we have our cache and renders option. Here we choose what file format we will use as our project intermediate format. These files are generated and created by Smoke when you are rendering effects, and also if you choose to store local copy of media files during the import process. Clicking on the flyout, you can see I have several different choices, including uncompressed. I'm going to leave this set to ProRes 422HQ. You should choose the preferred format that matches your bandwidth, what's available to you, and also your end result. Lastly, we have the proxy setting dialog box. I'll click on the tab to bring that forward. By default, the proxy options are off. You can choose to have proxies on or conditional, which then proxies will be created dependent upon the width of files. Or you can set proxies to be on and then proxies will be created automatically, not on a conditional basis. 
The proxy options will obviously create smaller media sources of your files. Keep in mind, using proxies will increase processing time for smoke when you are working with your files. I'm going to set this back to being off. So now I've got everything set for my project. I choose create and a new project has been created. Now in the flyout under project, you can see I have the original project I had created when I started recording this video, the Smoke 2015, and I also have my new project, Discovering Europe. If I want to edit any one of those from this dialog box, I can select it, and then I can choose the Edit button, and the Edit Project dialog box will appear, where I can alter and change the resolution, the cache render options, and the proxy settings. I can even delete the project or delete the project setups from this dialog box if I wanted to. I'll cancel that for right now. Now I want to start my project. So I have the Smoke 2015 project set. I choose Start. Smoke will now launch into that project with the user that was also selected at that dialog box. Looking in the upper left corner of our media library, you can see where it reads Workspace, and then in parentheses is the name of the project that we're working in, Smoke 2015. You can edit, delete, and create new projects from within inside of a project. So for example, if I go to the file menu, and I choose project and user settings, the project and user setting dialog box will appear where, just like out on the splash screen, I have a project settings and I have my user settings. Currently, we're in the project name Smoke 2015. If I want to switch to the other project, I can click on the flyout and there is Discovering Europe. I'll choose that. Now, if before I load it, if I want to edit this, I can choose the edit button and the edit dialog box will appear where I can change the resolution, project's frame rate, and the cache and render settings. I can also delete a project or delete the project setups from this dialog box. Keep in mind, you cannot delete a project that you are currently in. So if I wanted to delete the project Smoke 2015, I would need to be in a different project and then access that project from this dialog box, and then I could delete it. Remember, if you delete a project, it is undoable. I'll cancel this. I could create a new project from here by clicking the New button. And now the Create New Project dialog box appears, just like we had out in our splash screen when we first started Smoke 2015. I'll cancel that for right now. Now I want to load this project, the one named Discovering Europe. Remember, if we look over here in the upper left, it reads Smoke 2015. That's the project that I am in. I'll choose the load button though with Discovering Europe chosen from my project dialog box and it will now be the current project I'm working in. I click the close button. If you look in the upper left corner of our media library, you'll now see it reads Discovering Europe. This is the current project that I am in. So this is a quick look at how you can create projects, edit projects, modify and delete projects all from either the opening splash screen of Smoke 2015 or from within a project that you are already working in.